This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Man is sentenced for illegal dog rearing operation in Portmore. A Portmore man who was held for illegally rearing dogs in Portmore, St. Catherine, was on Tuesday sentenced for breaches of the Public Health Nuisance Act. He is Tyrone Gilzean, a laborer of Portmore. When he appeared before Judge Nicole Kellier, he was fined $50,000 or 30 days imprisonment for failure to obey a notice and a failure to stop the rearing of animals in a residential community. The Crown had led evidence that members of the St. Catherine Health Department received the information that Gilzean was raising dogs for sale and causing a nuisance. Checks reportedly revealed a lack of electricity and running water at the premises, as well as a dog feces around the property. Gilzean ignored a notice served on him by the health department to cease his operations. He was tried and found guilty on October 3 in the St. Catherine Parish Court. Four-year-old St. Mary girl killed in suspected home arson attack. A four-year-old girl was burnt to death after a fire suspected to be the work of arsonist destroyed her home in Dean Penn District, Highgate, St. Mary, on Tuesday morning. She has been identified as Saraya Cohen. The girl's mother, Rosa Beecher, 38, and other family members also received injuries and are said to be in serious condition in hospital. The incident happened around 4 o'clock. It is reported that the occupants of the house were asleep when Beecher felt a liquid substance on her and then immediately felt a fire. When she got up, the house was engulfed in flames. She managed to run to safety but received the severe burns to her body. She was unable to alert or assist anyone. The fire department was called and after cooling down operations, the charred remains of her daughter were found. The girl's father, Okoy Cohen, who lives elsewhere, told reporters that he has been left devastated by the death of his child. Me never know if she burn up or what, but when me come in a de taxi, me hear that me daughter burn up in a de fire. Me start cry. I heard she was sleeping and somebody came and threw a bottle bomb through the window, Cohen said. She was nice, good looking and jovial, he said of his daughter. Acting commandant for the St. Mary Police Division, Deputy Superintendent Kevin Francis told the news that investigations are ongoing. He said the police are treating the incident as a case of suspected arson. St. Elizabeth residents call for road improvements and water. Residents of Good Hope and adjoining areas in St. Elizabeth have called for improvements to be made to the road leading to their community. According to the residents, despite numerous representation to both central and local government over the years, not much has been done to improve the state of the roadway. The residents say the road surface is worsened after rainfall and there is an urgent need for major rehabilitation considering the last significant work was carried out some 20 years ago. They say public transportation operators have also threatened to withdraw their services if something is not done soon to improve the state of the roadway. The residents also say they are awaiting the promised delivery of piped water from the National Water Commission. In the probing incident involving cop and a woman in Montego Bay, the Independent Commission of Investigation's investigators are probing an incident Sunday in which a policeman was stabbed and a woman shot during an altercation in downtown Montego Bay. The incident occurred along Union Street. It is reported that the woman and the policeman were involved in an altercation when she allegedly used a broken bottle to stab him in the face and the neck. He responded by shooting her in the leg. Both have been hospitalized. A senior investigator told the news that statements are being collected in the case. A video of the incident has been circulating on social media. Tufton says KPH needs a multi-billion dollar overhaul. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has reacted to opposition spokesperson Dr. Maurice Geyser call for him to ensure that all operating theaters in public hospitals across the island are adequately maintained to deliver quality patient services. In a statement Monday, Dr. Geyser said 
he had received reports that one of the operating theaters at the Kingston Public Hospital is out of service due to a massive water leak from the ceiling. Speaking with the news on Tuesday morning, Dr. Tufton said while the call for maintenance of the facility is understood, it ignores that the country's health infrastructure has not benefited from any major rehabilitation for years, a situation the current government hopes to address. He said the more than 200-year-old KPH plant needs a multi-billion dollar overhaul to avert a collapse. It is not unusual to have issues of this kind in a hospital, and in this case a hospital that is very old and over many, many years has not benefited from a significant renovation and overhauling. When these things happen, we send the team in and we correct the problem. But it also, more fundamentally, is a statement on the state of that particular facility which needs significant overhauling. Preliminary assessment suggests that it could run you into tens of millions of US dollars, but the specifics of that would have to come after we have looked at all the issues and attempt to address those issues. So the call around the leak, while I understand and appreciate the need to address it, is ignoring also the bigger challenge that we face in that our health infrastructure has not benefited from many major many, many, many years. And this has cut across administrations and something that this government is attempting to deal with. Elder arrested for cultivating ganja on lands adjoining Bob Marley Beach. The Corporate Communications Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force on Monday confirmed that a Rastafarian elder was arrested for cultivating ganja on lands adjoining the Bob Marley Beach in Bull Bay, St. Andrew, sparking outrage. Head of the unit, Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, told the news that she did not have all the details surrounding the matter but said that the elder had no permit for such an undertaking. The amount he was producing, he didn't have a license for it, she said. However, Rastafarian attorney at law, Marcus Goff, questioned the legitimacy of the raid at the elder's property by a police team from Morant Bay. He pointed out that in 2015, the Dangerous Drugs Act was amended to allow Jamaicans to grow no more than five ganja plants at a time. At the same time, Rastafarians were given the right to cultivate more than five plants of ganja for sacramental uses, but those expecting to hold those privileges would first need a permit from the Ministry of Justice. According to Goff, since the amendments were made, no permits have been issued. Goff claimed that Monday's raid was politically motivated based on recent media reports of claims that developers of a 4,000-room hotel set for lands leading to Bob Marley Beach had planned to evict Rastafarian families from adjoining lands and restrict public access to the free beach. Rastafari have the right to their sacrament. The police were wrong to chop down the ganja and lock up the elder. It is part of the ongoing strategy to get people off the land. That farm that is there for the family is not a secret. The fact that they chose not to do it after everything come on the news, it's a part of their whole intimidation. They didn't come from Bull Bay Station, which is five minutes around the corner. They drove through all the bad roads to come all the way to Bulbay to come and do this. This thing is politically connected, the attorney said. Gov added that since 2015, many members of the Rastafarian community have applied for licenses. He told the news that in recent meetings with Justice Minister Delroy Chuck and the National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang, as well as Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson, it was revealed that the permits were delayed because of an issue with regulations. Many Rastafarians have applied, including the elder who was arrested, and there was total non-response from the Ministry of Justice. It cannot be right that in 2015, the law was amended to recognize Rastafarians' constitutional rights to ganja, and the authorities who were to regulate it have not done so, Goff said. He added the Grassroots Ganja Association met with the minister on July 1. When we asked the minister why it has not been processed, we were told that it is because the regulations are not yet in place and that this is seven years after the law has already recognized Rastafarian rights to cultivate. Ultimately, we are saying that this is another situation where the Rastafari community's rights are being curtailed and that that is not right.
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.